please welcome to the stage His Excellency Faisal Al Banai, Secretary General of the Advanced Technology Research Council and advisor to the UAE President for Strategic Research and Advanced Technology Affairs. Your Excellency Faisal, do you know how long I've been waiting to sit down with you and talk to you? You're such a busy person. You know, I. I've been so inspired by the journey of ATRC and TII. I'll, I'll ask you about it in a, in a minute. But my first question is this. We are in the year 2024 right now. Yeah. It's 2034. We're sitting here at ADNIC. Yeah. What do you see? I see that uh, UAE being a key hub for innovation and tech R&D uh, at not just at a regional stage, but at a global uh, stage. Uh, so although this is a journey that was started a few years ago, I think 10 years from now, uh, we will definitely be a key hub uh, globally when it comes to R&D. I think uh, we will also see that there is, this is a hub where deep tech startups are launching from the UAE using our own DNA and formula to make it happen. You know, Silicon Valley had its formula, Israel had its formula, China has its formula. Reality, you can't really copy different formulas or ingredients to make it happen. And I think we are putting together in the UAE how to really create this ecosystem. And I think in another 10 years from now, uh, we will see many more deep tech uh, technologies coming out of the UAE in variety of fields. And last but not least, hopefully uh, the same uh, conference would be probably 10 times uh, larger with talent from around the globe, seeing the UAE as a home and as a hub uh, for uh, interacting, for meeting people from around the world. Uh, and I think this is key part of the UAE vision here. That's a fantastic answer. And I'm going to ask this question I've had for such a long time. Since it was a year and a half ago that I came to the UAE for the first time. And we are here right first now. First time. First time was a year and a half ago. And thanks to all of our partners, it happened so fast. Um, I saw ATRC and I saw TII. So when I was doing my PhD, I didn't know about TII. And later on, a few years ago, I started hearing about TII and I was thinking, how did I not know about this? I was missing this key, important part of the ecosystem. And it wasn't until I came here that they told me TI has only been around for, for four years. Yes. With more than 1,000 researchers. Yes. How did, why did you create ATRC? <laughs> this is amazing. I think uh, this is a key part of the president's vision of seeing how does UAE move to the knowledge economy? How will UAE, to move to that knowledge economy, it won't just happen by wishing uh, it, uh, it happened. How will we be ready for the last barrel of oil to be sold? So building a knowledge economy, building an ecosystem around the knowledge economy, and this chaired, when the launch of ATRC chaired by Sheikh Khalid, I think gave us the maximum launching pad to do this. And uh, there were three very clear objectives when ATRC was launched. Actually, we were announced in the midst of COVID. So actually, you could not travel. You could not go anywhere, and we had to build ATRC at, at, that, uh, at that time. And there were three very clear, distinct objectives. One, make Abu Dhabi and the UAE a global talent hub for deep tech talent to come over here. So leverage that the UAE is a country that's welcoming to all nationalities, leverage that the UAE has diverse backgrounds of people from all over the place, and replicate this in the tech space. So one is a global hub for international talent. In line with that, grow the local UAE talent within that sphere. The second was build a knowledge economy, build technologies that start serving real practical use cases. It's, we're, not, we're not a university. Um, uh, we are an applied research center and we complete the ecosystem between universities and companies uh, in this regard. So that's the connector in the middle. 
So the second objective was build the knowledge economy, build technologies that actually make an impact to our ecosystem, but build technologies that can start becoming global technology, and we can start seeing the impact for it. Last but not least, have ATRC become a global connector hub of interacting with east, west, north, south, interact with everyone, and really build this soft relationship with everyone where we can do collaboration of research, we can do engagements in different programs. And today, if I'm not mistaken, we have over 100 universities. We don't have MOUs with these guys. We have 100 universities where we have deep technical collaboration agreements where we are funding the research program, it's working for what we need, and they, they really cover every country around the world in key countries that have, that have research capabilities. This gives us a major connecting power of having a country like UAE, but really connected to talent from around the world. And that's one of the reasons why we brought Expanse here. It was uh, w hosted by ADQ, and because of the presence and, and, yeah. and support of ATRC. Now bring it to one of those technologies. I was actually here in the UAE when I saw that you were in the Times Magazine's uh, most influential figures, and I, and I was looking at this, I said, I know one of these people. <laughs> um, you went with open source. Yes. Why? I think when we were starting, at least as TII in, in, in this journey, um, uh, one, I think we wanted to see what could we build and can we really punch way above our weight in, in, in this game? Because again, the usual suspect players <laughs> yes. are not us. You know, you have US, you have China, you have a few other players. UAE doesn't necessarily come on the radar a few years ago of developing specific AI uh, uh, technology. I mean, UAE comes on the radar for many things. It wasn't that mm -hmm. at, at that point of time. And for us, we saw AI as a Although AI is not new, but what was happening in LLMs and all of that was definitely a key, a key curve. We wanted to see what we could build, but we feel that AI is such a transformative technology, unlike many other technologies where throughout the civilization of, of human beings, there were few inflection points where certain technologies happened and took you to the next level. AI can be as transformative if you know, delivers to its promise and it's, it's on that momentum. We did not feel that AI should be something that is controlled by the few. We think AI is a technology that many nations should be able to leverage as a base. It can transform many industries, but can transform many nations. And having AI become controlled by the few, few companies, few countries, is not a vision that we wanted to see. And we wanted as UAE and as Abu Dhabi, to contribute to the open source ecosystem, build a wider network in that regard, and build AI with others in that regard to benefit our society and other societies. And I think it was a good decision supported by leadership, and frankly, it further reinforced our position on the map that we can be a serious player in. And you've become such a leader in the AI space in such a short period of time. And now you're investing a lot in quantum. Yes. Are you seeing quantum as the next AI? I think, uh, again, although quantum is not necessarily a new research topic, but like many things, sometimes progress on a specific research area is fairly flat, and then you might reach to a certain inflection point uh, and, and, and where it is. I think quantum is, I wouldn't say it completely hit the inflection point today, but it's definitely been picking up dramatic traction in terms of the progress that is happening in, in, in quantum. And again, quantum uh, is, a, is a wide statement. There is quantum computing, there is quantum communication, there is quantum sensing, there's quantum algorithms. I mean, there, there are many things. They are all at different stages of maturity. Mm -hmm. So if you say quantum communication, there is today quantum communication. I think we are presenting our own UAE technology where it's our own algorithms, it's our own hardware that can connect now point to point purely using quantum communication. Quantum computing is not yet fully there, but quantum encryption or qu post-quantum uh, encryption is already, is already here. And I think as the UAE and where we are going in, in this regard, if we are going to be a player, 
we're really riding on where the latest trending technologies are because frankly, it's an easier way for us to catch up and be part of the leading pack. I mean, if you're trying to catch up in a very old technology, it might take yes. a long time. Absolutely. The ecosystem is much bigger. But things like AI, things like quantum, a number of other areas, autonomous and other things, even if there was someone in the field for m many mm -hmm. years ago, we can catch up pretty quickly since it's still new. And I think quantum, if I say computing, whenever it happens fully, whether next five years, 10 years or so, when it happens, I think it will have such a distinct situation where there will be countries living in the quantum Absolutely. age yes. and there will be countries living in the stone mm -hmm. age. If whoever does not have access to this technology, mm -hmm. when I'm referring to the compute part, when it's fully um, uh, enabled for a more mass use, the divide will be so large, we don't know what will happen in export control and all of these things. So as UAE, we are investing to ensure we have some foot in the game. We are wisely trying to invest in where to do, do stuff around quantum and on other areas, because frankly, we don't think it's a technology that we should be left as passengers in the bus. We want to be part of that pack. We, want, we see it as a dramatically revolutionary technology. And when it happens, I think the impact for it will eclipse many other things that is happening today globally. Absolutely, and the tunnel that we are entering from, yes. right? That tunnel, for those of you who might not notice, that is a live tunnel. That's not a video. That is in collaboration with, with TII, with the quantum random number generators, and that's a walkthrough entanglement. So as you mentioned, many of our quantum technologies are here right now. We're using them. It's right there. <laughs> you can walk through it. Um, and I have one last question that I ask for your permission to ask you. What is your vision for the UAE? I think the vision is the president's vision. Uh, and the, the chairman of ATRC's uh, doubling down vision what the, 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 the president wants, which is in four years, we went from T0, where there was literally nothing. There was no space, there was no team, there was nothing Amazing. there. Today, we are over a 1,000 researchers from, I think, 70 nationalities or something around the, around the world. We are connected to 100 university professors that are working on our programs that we are funding them. We already started launching, I think, already in this quarter, we, now we'll have four tech startups that have launched from ATRC and TII. And I think the vision, what leadership is putting is, UAE will become a serious player in the tech research field in this regard. And I would say this journey has not been easy from you know, trying to ramp up or trying to do things. But I think what made the journey much, much easier is the, the focus and commitment from leadership to break any barrier in the path, really help propel this forward, remove any obstacles, any doubt, any whatever it is in terms of, yeah, maybe we should ramp up very mm -hmm. gradually, maybe we should see what happens, maybe X. And I think UAE being a key player globally when it comes to research, but I think the world also needs, and the world we're living in today, needs countries like UAE that can really con unite the world, unite researchers around the world, unite cultures around the world to come and say, this is a great place to come do your research. You can meet people from every nationality, every color, every background, every uh, experience that they have. You can become that safe haven hub that welcomes everyone, that encourages everyone. I mean, the researchers that we have, other than golden visas, whatever, already a number of them, when they came, they were foreigners. Today, they're UAE citizens oh. uh, in, in, in this regard. So, to summarize it, I think UAE becoming a serious tech hub globally, UAE becoming a serious uniting force for connecting technology, research from around the world, and having a hub where people can talk to each other and collaborate as opposed to different parts of the world isolating the, yes. themselves. And frankly, acting as an aspiration to a new part of the world mm -hmm. where there is such an amazing talent in the zone around us that having an ent entity and a country right. like UAE 
pull all of these, leverage the ecosystem that you have in the UAE, nice infrastructure, welcoming uh, environment, I think creates a great inspiration for the region and what, can ha and what the region can look like Absolutely. if you really do the right thing. And I think that's the, the, the leadership vision, and that's at least we will try to find a way to contribute to that vision. And you have done that, and that is a horizon vision. And that is what allows humanity to move forward, right? We're sitting here in what well, we made a tribute to an enchanted forest of discovery and knowledge and the sense of wonder. Thank you for creating a foundation for our scientists Thank and our developers. Much. Thank you. Your Excellency Faisal, it has been such a pleasure and honor. Thank you so and, much for and your time. Hopefully we do this in 10 years and we discuss Absolutely, this. 10 years. Thank now you. we're going to be here. Thank, Thank you, you so much, Your Excellency. Thank you.